One of the big things we, we try to encourage people to think about is that you want to go big. You always want to go big. That's, 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 that's sort of a natural truism. But you need focus. And you want to go sort of small to go big. And, if you, uh, and the reason you do that is if you go big too early, if you scale too early, you try to be too, too many things. You try to be all things to all people. Very common mistake, mistake I've made in the past. Uh, perhaps Brent has too. And being all things to all people is just wrecks havoc on your customer service, on your product development. Like how do you prioritize which features to build? For whom? How do you know who to acquire? And going small to go big provides that focus uh, on these passionate customers, passionate users who will put more people on top of your, in the top of your funnel. And then as Brent said, you can go in and, and, and glom on sort of adjacent markets, adjacent segments. And it's that focus that, that builds organic growth. I actually think that's what Facebook did early on uh, when they completely dominated the college market. And I think Zuckerberg did, made the right choice there. In fact, there's a video uh, you can find online where he talks about how he doesn't want to change the world. This is circa 2005. He says, I don't want to change the world. I just want to build a cool college directory product. And I think that's a great example of him going niche, going small to go big. Also a good example of how the vision evolves over time. Absolutely, absolutely. In one of our, in fact, one of our case studies, another one's, um, uh, there's a thing called an Olo clip. It's a little uh, clip you put on your iPhone. It's got a little macro lens, a fisheye lens. And it was uh, developed by a designer in Huntington Beach, California. Um, and he wa always wanted to go big. He wanted to go to Apple. He wanted to go to Best Buy. He wanted to go to Target, get mainstream retail. What did he do instead? He went on Kickstarter, got, I think, 1,000, 1,500 backers. I was one of them, actually. Um, and uh, crowdfunded the, the initial uh, product run. Um, developed a great product, got a lot of great buzz on it. It is a great product, right? So this wasn't sort of manufactured or inorganic buzz. And now it's being, now you can go walk into the Apple store and get one of these, right? You want niche to go big. I think it's a, it's a wonderful strategy. When we talk to entrepreneurs, they often, and they get freaked out when we're telling them that you have to go small and really narrowly define a market segment so that you can understand the core value proposition. They, their investors are maybe telling them to go big, you know, their heart's telling them to go big. So we're not saying you won't go after these other market segments, but you just, you can't do it. You need a foundation to build first before you go out to these other market segments. And again, we, I like to go back to thinking about, uh, uh, you know, making a promise to somebody. It's actually very hard to make a promise you can fulfill if you, if you do it to 100 people, right? You go into a room and there's 100 people there and you try to make a, a purposeful promise to all of those people in the room. It's actually, it's actually difficult if it's you know, a, a disparate group and they, they're not really sharing the same pain or passion. I, I was telling an entrepreneur just last night, I was saying, no, no, take your customer by the hand, look into their eyes and make them a promise around solving this problem or addressing this passion. And, and so if you can get down to that emotional level, then you're, you, you have an idea what this, this core value prop is that you need to deliver.